In order to use the simplex algorithm, there are two requirements. Any feasible solution must correspond to non-negative values for the slack variable, and we must begin at a feasible solution. Let's begin by talking about this first requirement. To add a slack variable to an inequality like 3x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 100, because the left-hand side is greater, we either need to subtract the slack variable or rewrite the inequality so it's less than or equal to, so we can then add the slack variable. We usually do the latter and say the inequality is in standard form. So let's take a look at another example. Suppose we have a training facility that offers certification for two types of classes, A and B. These classes require different amounts of instructor and lab time, and let's say there's some other restriction on the number of classes that they can offer. If the two classes bring in different amounts of revenue, and we have a constraint on the amount of instructor and lab time, we can try to find the number of classes to offer to maximize the revenue. So let x be the number of type A classes, and y be the number of type B classes. The number of hours of instructor time required will be, and the number of hours of lab time will be, If the number of type A classes can't exceed 15 more than the number of type B classes, then it must be less than or equal to 15 more. And so that gives us the inequality, which we can put into the standard form as and the revenue for type A and type B classes is And so our system of inequalities becomes, and we want to maximize our objective function. Adding the slack variables and rewriting the objective function as an equation in standard form gives us And so our initial tableau will be Now x has the greatest negative coefficient in the L row, so it will be our entering variable. We find the quotients, so we'll use our third row as the pivot row and C3 as the exiting variable. So we'll row reduce, the most negative coefficient in the L row is for Y, which will be our entering variable, we find where we ignore the quotient 15 divided by negative 1 since it won't be positive. The pivot row is the first row, and the exiting variable will be C1. And we'll row reduce. And again, we won't bother to try and get the pivots equal to 1, because that will either require introducing a mess of fractions, or introducing a bunch of decimals, which introduces round-off error, which can become quite serious by the time we get to the end of the problem. Now, since all the coefficients in the L row are non-negative, we can't increase the objective function anymore. So solving for x and y, since the number of classes must be an integer, we'll look at the nearby points. Those will be the points whose coordinates are either these values rounded up or down in all possible combinations. And so there's four of them. If x equals 21 and y equals 6, our inequalities are which are all satisfied, and so we can find the value of the objective function. If x equals 22 and y equals 6, then our inequalities are And one of them fails, so 22.6 is outside the feasible region.
If x equals 22, y equals 7, our inequalities are. And so 22, 7 is outside the feasible region. If x equals 21, y equals 7, then our inequalities become. So all the inequalities are satisfied, and our point is inside the feasible region. Putting our results together, we see. And so at x equals 22, y equals 7, our objective function has the greatest possible value.